Robia Scott rocketed to success as a professional dancer and actress in Hollywood. Her big break came when she toured with Prince and then landed a role in TV shows including 90210 and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But Robia's excessive spending and obsession with a perfect body left her unsatisfied. I was always trying to look for that thing that would make me feel at rest inside of myself. In her book, Counterfeit Comforts, Robia shares what happened when she gave up material things and what she realized was the one thing money could never buy. And with us now is Robia Scott. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. You know, I think everybody can relate to what you felt. I think the thing that might be surprising to them is you had a lot of things going on in your life that others would have envied and said, oh, if I could only do that, if I could only do this, then I would have that peace inside, then I would have that sense of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen for you. Go back to the beginning. What was it that got you intrigued with the whole concept of show business to start with? Well, I saw the movie Flashdance at a young age. And that was it. The next day I got a big old perm, which you saw from some of those pictures you just put up. That was a, a Jennifer Beals perm. Uh, and I started pursuing dancing. Yeah. Yeah. And so you took, you, you, I mean, a lot of people saw that and I think said, gee, I wish I could do that and might have taken dance classes, but you actually made it work. I was committed. Yeah. I was tenacious. I mean, you had that drive inside of I, you I to did. push. I did. At a very young age, I decided that's what I want to do, and uh, I was blessed to have a family that supported that. Yeah. So I was at dance class every single day for hours and, and then just decided to go professional. So what was your big break? Because to be a dancer, I mean, that's not an easy thing to break into. Exactly, yes. Uh, my first job was uh, Debbie Gibson music video, Shake Your Love. Your first job. That was wow. my first job. And then uh, a couple years later, I got hired to work with Prince. Wow. So that really put me on the map as a dancer. So you danced for a while, mm -hmm. and, and it was wonderful. But then you decided to move into the acting arena. I did. I retired, actually, at 22, <laughs> because I felt that I had had a great... Gosh, you even got the pro players. <laughs> I had a great dance career, yeah. so I know that's young, but I just wanted to um, see what else I could do, and, I, and acting seemed like a good transition, you know, staying in the arts. Yeah. So I started um, uh, studying and going on auditions, and then again, I just started booking jobs. Things started opening for me. So a lot of people, Robia, would look at that and say, so why was that not enough to fill your, your bucket, your satisfaction? Ah. Uh. I mean, it was, I was blessed. I was really living a great life. I was traveling the world. I was making a lot of money. I was on television. And, you know, I can't say that those things are not good. But, you know, at the end of the day, you still go to bed and, mm -hmm. and you live inside of yourself. Yeah. You know, so inside of me wasn't where I wanted it to be. I felt uncomfortable in my skin. I felt tormented. I felt anxious. I was chain smoking. I was dealing with issues with my body and food. And so even though, you know, I was on television and doing all these great things, I still just didn't have peace. I didn't have rest. It's kind of scary when you realize that you have what the world would say is it all. The answer. Yeah, I got there. And you're still coming up short. Yes. I know. think that we all think if we could just get those things, yes. then we'd be happy. And, and sometimes you really have to get mm -hmm. those things to realize that they bring some happiness, yeah. but there's certain places of fulfillment that they don't bring. You mentioned the role of food in your life. And really, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that, but that started for you at a very young age. Very young. I talk about it in my book that really at the age of seven, I was counting calories. I knew how many calories Why? were in a peanut what butter sandwich. What in the world made you say, I need to count my calories? You know, I don't know. I just was aware that I wanted to be thin and I wanted to be attractive. And maybe it was the media or I, I just... Um, that was just important to me. Well, and a lot of people would say, okay, so you'd like to be thin, but you're a dancer. I mean, you're working, you're working out, you're, d but you still had that innate need to control your food. That's what's so interesting to people because when I talk about having a food issue, they mm -hmm. say, oh, well, you're so thin now. Were you really heavy at some time? Mm -hmm. And I was never heavy. Yeah. I was always very thin. I never looked like I had a problem. So the problem wasn't really, um, overeating and gaining weight. It was really where I was, the torment around food, fear of certain foods, you know, planning out all my food for a day the night before. Wow. Um, oh yeah, think lying in bed at night, thinking about every meal that I was going to have, what I was not going to eat, binge eating, purging. Um, Your book is called Counterfeit Comforts. Yes. 
spending was another one of those counterfeit comforts. For me, it life. was. Well, there are so many counterfeit comforts. Yeah. There's cigarettes, alcohol, shopping, relationships, mm -hmm. even busyness, yeah. you know, being so, yes. you yes, know what yes, I mean? Yes, I do. So you can just be constantly busy. An acronym I talk about in the book is busy, uh, B-U-S-Y, being under Satan's yoke. Mm. Because often we're so busy, busy, busy that we're never connected with ourselves or we push ourselves into constant achieving because we don't want to deal with what's going on. Now, along the way, you came into a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. You actually ran into a girl at an audition who had I am tattooed on the back of her neck. She really invested herself in you. She did. You know, I was seeking God. I've always been a believer in God, and I was seeking God, and I got into the New Age movement a little bit, being in California. that's mm -hmm. prevalent there, and I was reading a lot of self-help books, which is kind of funny because later I realized, you know, it was myself that got me into this mess. If yeah. myself knew what the heck it was doing, I wouldn't be <laughs> in this place. So to look to myself for answers was kind of an oxymoron. So I realized I needed something greater than myself. Mm -hmm. I needed God. Um, so I was doing New Age and kind of reading God things, but it just, you know, I was still chain smoking. I was yeah. still in bondage. So yeah. I was open and I was searching and seeking. And I ran into this girl who had I am tattooed on the back of her neck. And I thought, oh, is that, you know, the new age positive affirmations? And she, she was said, no, 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 no. That's I am the great I am of the Bible. Wow. So she started talking to me about Jesus. She brought me to her church. And that's when I became a Christian. And yet the freedom you were looking for didn't come right away just because you embraced Christ and invited him into your life. What was it that actually changed things for you? Yes, it's interesting because as soon as I became a Christian, I got invested in church, I was reading the Bible, and I saw freedom in other areas of my life. But this area with food was not getting better. Mm -hmm. So it was really in a moment of prayer that I cried out and I said, God, please help me. I'm in bondage here. Uh, I, I believe in the Bible. I know that you can set me free. So yeah. what is the problem? How can I do it? And in my spirit, as I was in prayer, I heard food is not your issue. You have too many counterfeit comforts. Yeah. And that just illuminated something for me because I'd never heard a pastor say that. I never heard that phrase, counterfeit comforts. And right away, the Holy Spirit kind of reminded me that in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is the comforter mm. and that I was using food as a counterfeit. Yeah. And I started kind of praying into it and the Lord showed me, yes, that's why when you try to deal with any counterfeit comfort by trying to stop the behavior or control the behavior or use willpower, mm -hmm. that doesn't really last because the issue that you're dealing with, for me it was food, mm -hmm. it, that's just really the fruit of a deeper problem. It's the fruit of, of a root. So would you say to folks who are relating to everything that you're sharing today that getting to the heart of it is where the freedom comes from? Absolutely. What the Lord spoke to me is if that you, He said to me, if you would let me in to those roots, the fruits will just take care of themselves. Yeah. And it was yeah. really not just about getting free from the bondage, which is mm -hmm. important, but the real essence of this book and the journey that he took me on was learning how to connect with him. Yeah. I hear so many Christians, you know, we all say, oh, it's, you know, it's not religion, it's relationship. It's not religion, it's yes. relationship. But then I think, well, how many of us are really having a relationship, relationship where yes. we hear him? Where we time. experience him, where we spend that time, we're not running around busy, mm -hmm. where we set ourselves apart, yeah. where we're, you know, still and we know him there. So that's, that was really the essence of this book, helping believers get into a place where they can connect with God yes. personally. It's a book everyone needs to read. You can hear more of Robia's story in her book. It's called Counterfeit Comforts. It's a message for all of us. It's available in stores nationwide. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.